All right, so let's reverse the course. And let's release the blessing. Hallelujah. And the interesting thing is that today we're talking about the vengeance part of God. There is a part of this blessing that defends the child of God. You are never left alone. You have a defender. Is somebody getting this? It's interesting that there are many people in churches that don't believe the word of God. They don't really believe the things they read in the Bible. You need to understand there is no promise of God that is empty. There is no promise of God that is impotent. Every promise of God carries in itself the ability to be fulfilled. Somebody gets what I'm saying? That's why they call it the living word. It's not a dead word. It's a living word. That means the word has life inside it to bring itself to pass. If you notice, one of the things they use to describe the word of God is seed. And that's not a coincidence. The reason is because seeds are one of the things that when you drop them, they look ordinary, but they have life. I don't know if somebody get what I'm saying. A seed looks empty, looks powerless. Plant it. Plant it. I've seen seeds crack open concrete to come out. It has life, but you can't see any movement. You can't see anything, but there's life inside of it to produce. So if you're a child of God, you better start taking the word of God literally. You better start taking it seriously. Because it has life in itself to what? Produce. Hmm. Let's go to our, 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 our promise from God. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. We can start from verse 1. So this is where actually God made the promise to Abraham. This is what we call the blessing of Abraham. So if you read this, you need to capture everything here. It belongs to you. Remember, we've studied the fact that as a believer, you are connected to the exact blessing of Abraham. Do you remember that? We read that in the book of Galatians. That as Christians, we are now connected. DJ, can you bring that back so that somebody can see it? You are now connected to the blessing. The very blessing that Abraham had is what you have on your life. You carry something. Let me tell you about you carry something. Tell him or her, if you are a born again Christian, you carry something. Very important. If you are born again, you actually do carry something. It's the same blessing of it they bring in Galatians. He says, so then, they which be of faith are what? Blessed with faithful Abraham. I wonder where they said that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. DJ, quickly, quickly. All right. So, so, so you are actually connected to the exact same blessing that Abraham has. You need to understand that you don't have a, a substandard one. You don't have a secondary one. It's the exact same blessing that Abraham has. What's happening, guys? Okay. It says that the blessing of who? Do you see that? And this, this Galatians, this New Testament said, the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Gentiles are what we used to be, people that didn't have a connection with God, okay? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through who? Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So you have the blessing of what? Abraham. So let's read that blessing of Abraham. This was the first place God actually proclaimed the blessing upon Abraham, okay? This was the first place. Genesis 12, from verse 1. He said, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto what? A land I will show you. Verse 2. It says, now this is the promise now. Look at this. And it's you. Remember, Abraham's blessings are the same as the one you have. So this is you God is talking to here. It says, and I will make thee what? A great nation. Are you receiving that? He said, I will make you a great nation. He said, I will what? Bless thee. And I will make what? 
thy name great. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll start again. It says, I'll make you a great nation. I'll make you a great nation. You need to change your mentality. You are not meant to be a small time player. He said, I'll make you a great nation. Nation there doesn't necessarily mean country. It just means I'll make you a big force to be reckoned with. Somebody gets what I'm saying? I'll make you a great nation. He says, I will bless thee. He said, and I'll make your name great. Look, whether you own a business here or you are a career person working somewhere, your name will be great. <laughs> that will make your name great. Some people don't know that there are, there are some people's names that is better than money. Name is capital. Name opens doors. There's some people's name that is better than money. Because once that name is released, doors open. Somebody gets what I'm saying? So I will make your name great. So it's not that you are the one desiring it. This is the promise God made. That I will make your name great. Hmm. See the next one. And thou shall be what? A blessing. We did this last week, Abby. That we are blessed to be what? A blessing. Not to just consume. We did that last week. Verse 3. It said, now this is where we're really going today. It says, I will do what? Bless them that bless you, and I will what? Curse him that curseth you. So there is a dimension of this blessing that brings protection. He said, I will bless those that bless you, but I will curse those that curse you. That's why as a believer, you must be careful about fighting another believer. And that believer too has to be careful about fighting you. Because there is an arrangement for defense. I will curse him that cursed you. <laughs> if God is fighting you, who can you call for help? Is it Shango or Baal? <laughs> they won't show up. They know better than to show up. The prophets of Baal tried it. Elijah came. And say, if God be God, let him be God. If Baal be God, let him be God. Say, let's call for a showdown. Say, the God that answered it by fire, let him be God. Baal was telling his prophets, guys, calm down. They were parrying. Baal! Baal said, cool down. Because Baal knows what's up. They were parrying. Baal! <laughs> the fire won't go kill. They said, he, <laughs> they were mocking them, say, shout louder, maybe he has traveled. He can't hear. He said, I can hear them, but I can't come. You must be a madman to enter the ring with God. You can't come out alive. He can't be well with you. As in, they want to do boxing match, they introduce you. You have fought 38 fights. You lost uh, 10. You drew some. You won some. Blue corner, Baal. They do not call the red corner. The almighty God. Jehovah Sabiot. The God of the angel armies. <laughs> the God of hosts. He has fought billions uncountable battles. Lost none. Drawn none. All of them technical knockouts. TKO. Knockout. Many of the people that fought him are dead. Never recovered. If they introduce that kind of fight and call you, will you show up? You're not going to show up. Hallelujah. You're not going to show up. They say, bah! They say, you're not even mad. They said they, they began to cut themselves. That will go die. He said, I'm going to just die there. He didn't come. He didn't come. So, you as a Christian, you see, it's when you don't take this thing seriously that you too, you now fight another Christian. Because you don't understand who is defending him. He's the Lord of hosts. He fights for his children. He said, I will curse them that cursed you. That's what he told Abraham. He told Abraham, look, I got you. 
I got you. I got your back. Oh, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. See, you need confidence in this thing for it to work well. If I have time, I will show you all this. I hope I have time to do that. You need confidence in it. You need understanding of it for it to work. You need understanding of it for it to what? Work. Blessed is she that believe it, for there shall be what? A performance. That's how it works. That's how the kingdom works. For instance, I hope you know Jesus died for everybody in this world. You see everybody partaking of it? Do you know the difference between those partaking and not partaking? Some what? Have believed it. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Because I don't understand why you need to believe for something to work. That's how it works. That's how it works. Jesus died for everybody, not only me and you. He died for the whole world. Nobody is meant to go to hell. But some will still go because they never accepted. Hallelujah. Never accepted it. So this thing works when you understand it. He said, I will curse them that curse you. He told Abraham, anybody that messes with you, I will mess them up. Anyone. Listen, that's what, what oh, see, Married woman or married man, you think somebody is messing with your wife or your husband and you are crying? Call on the God of the angel armies. They will fight for you. That's what he says. He said, he said, he said men, treat your wife according to knowledge or your prayers will be hindered. God said, I will stop everything if you treat that woman badly. God defends his people. He defends his people. So he told Abraham, I will make your name great. In blessing, I will bless you. And all those things. He says, but I will curse them that curse you. <laughs> and do you know, sir? Right in the next chapter, Abraham entered a country, Egypt. Abraham entered Egypt because Egypt was the Canada of that time. Or the America of that time. <laughs> so when the economy was hard, everybody was going to Egypt. Isaac did the same thing. When there was famine too, he wanted to go to Egypt. This time too, Abraham did the same thing, his father. That's why I tell people that your attitude passes to your children. Some things some people call generational causes is just a spirit passing from father to son or to children. So you need to know that whatever you are doing now, if you don't overcome that battle, the battle will pass to your kids. That's why you must do it right. Somebody get what I'm saying? If you're the kind of man that you still beat your wife, sit after your wife, you are training your kids. You are training your daughters to think that is okay. You are training your sons to also do it. So they will face that challenge. Somebody getting what I'm saying? Same thing with you as a wife. If you're the kind of wife that would never speak up when you need to speak up, you're training your daughters to think that men are doing them a favor by marrying them. There are many men that could have been better today, but their wives will not talk. He's doing something stupid, but you are protecting him. Don't protect him. You are the person that should report him. Somebody get what I'm saying? Report him. He'll be angry, but he'll be better for it. Because women, women don't know where to draw the line. They want to help us protect because that's their nature to nurture. You can't nurture bad things. You know? When he's misbehaving, he's always coming back home late. He doesn't come to church. Raise alarm. Raise alarm. And men, don't be afraid to have father figures in your life. Don't be afraid to be submitted to authority. Every human being should be submitted. Because there's a the day of challenge. It's not your voice people will answer. Is the voice of whoever is above you. Some people's crisis now is based on that. Nobody that can come and stand and say, oh, this is this, this is this. You are all alone. In the day they accuse you, your, your, your own witness is not enough. I didn't do it. I did it. It's a shift. Who has any other witness? It's not your own witness. I don't know if you somebody get what I'm saying. You have nobody. Can you bail yourself if you are the arm robber? You need another person to come and bail you. So let's, 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 let's understand that. So Abraham moved to Egypt. It was a raining place. There was famine in the land. He moved to Egypt. When he got there, he said, uh, 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 he told his wife, I don't understand how beautiful that woman was because everywhere they went to, people were after that woman. Somebody get what I'm saying? All the daughters of Sarah in the house, you need to tap into that grace. That no matter how old you are, you will still look good. You will still be attractive. I'm telling you, see, anything you see in the Bible, you can tap into it. I hope you know. Anything you see in the Bible, you can tap, you can, you can draw from the scripture. So you don't need, to, um, Sarah didn't have all the plenty makeup that we use today. She had the glory of God. 
Because at that old age, everywhere, it's not only once they were trusting her. I will give you the gist. That's what I'm going. So <laughs> I was surprised that what is happening inside the Sarah that they are all chasing her? She had to be extremely attractive. I said, daughter of the covenant, the blessing of Abraham is yours. So you too can, you can tap into that. So all the women here, as you're getting older, you'll be getting finer. Yeah. That amen is not born again. Yeah. Tap into it. And it's free. You don't have to spend all the millions spent on makeup. It's free. So <laughs> they moved to Egypt. When they got there, Abraham was afraid that they would toast his wife. And because of his wife, they would kill him. So he told her to tell them that his sister, she's his sister. So that way they will, they will not do anything to him. Now, in a way, she was his half-sister because those days in the Middle East, even till now in some parts of the Middle East, they still marry within the family. They still do that a lot. Some people don't know that. In the Middle East, they still marry like that. They still marry cousins and sisters. They don't, they don't like to marry out. So it was a common thing then to marry your family. So she was technically his sister. But they were also married, so he, he was supposed to say, it's my wife. But she told her, hey, just say we are sisters, so they won't hurt me. And immediately they got to the town, the people noticed how fine she was, and the king invited her for dinner for the weekend to sleep over. <laughs> but the God of the angel armies said, I will defend you. Even when you mess up, I will defend you. As he took at that, he, he appeared to the king and said, go and return that woman now. Go and return the woman now. Same thing happened again in Genesis 20. This one was in Genesis 13. I, I don't think we have time to read the stories. The next one was in Genesis 20. They went again to Abimelech. Same story. I don't know why Abraham kept doing that. Same story. He told them, told her, you're my sister, you're not my wife. And when they got there, people went to tell the king that, ah, if you see this fine girl, DJ can bring down. Let's read it. They want to tell the king that who? I don't know if they can find the place. Okay, Abraham says yes, she's my old sister, and everyone like King of Gerar sent. No, I want where they. I don't know if you can find where they went to tell the king, but it's fine if you can find. But the men, the people of the town went to tell the king that ah, if you see this girl, he said that they're referring to that who? Who? <laughs> so immediately, the king <laughs> sent for her. <laughs> the king sent for her. And when the king sent for her for the weekend also to stay in his house, in the night, God appeared in the dream and told the guy, you're a dead man. If you touch that woman, you are dead. I'm just showing you how God was going behind the scenes. Listen, if you are here and you're a covenant child, God is always fighting for you. You might not know. Sometimes he doesn't call your notice to it. Sometimes he doesn't bother you with the information. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says they will surely gather. For every child of God that is getting blessed and being blessed, people gather for no... See, you can't even phantom the reason why people hate you sometimes. I don't know. Sometimes you, are, you just feel you are too blessed. You are just enjoying life. All of us are suffering. You are enjoying. <laughs> Praise God. He said, they will surely gather. I said, but not by me. I'm not, I didn't authorize that gathering. He said they will fall for your sake. Are you here, somebody? So twice, Abraham took his wife somewhere and lied as his sister, and the kings of the place took the wife, and God stepped in, even though he wasn't called. He stepped in. Are you here, somebody? I decreed anything fighting you, God will fight them. God will fight for you. In your office, if they gather against you, God will fight for you. In your neighborhood, if they gather against you, God will fight for you. In your village, if they gather against you, God will fight for you. Twice, God showed up and threatened the kings. In fact, in both cases, he commanded them to give Abraham things. Abraham lied. He defended him and told the kings to settle him. Hallelujah. You are getting compensation. I say you are getting compensation. Everywhere they mock you, God will make you. That woman was mocking Anna. 
that Anna didn't have a child. When God showed up, God didn't just give Anna a child. He gave Anna the, one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. That's knockout. That's what? Knockout. The God of the angel armies. The Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Pastor M will still do a detailed teaching on that. So that you understand that the reason why they call him the Lord of hosts is that he doesn't even move alone. He has an, a whole armed forces behind him. If you see the kind of um, detailed past, uh, you know, a, 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 a protocol that follows the president of the United States alone. People that go ahead and are in position to make sure if there's any problem, they can handle it. Then you imagine when the Almighty is moving. They call him the Lord of hosts, angel army. So he goes with the whole armed forces. Air force, navy, army, everybody going at the same time. I decree that in this season, nothing will harm you in the name of Jesus. When you understand this thing, you, that's why you will know that you cannot be cursed. There are busy people that are wondering if they are cursed. The reason why you are wondering if you are cursed is that you have never studied the blessing. You have only studied the curse. You don't understand that what you carry neutralizes every curse. They went to hire a prophet one time to curse the children of Israel. The prophet came, truly. And he wanted to curse the children of Israel. And every time he opened his mouth to curse them, blessings came out. And he ended by telling them, you cannot curse whom God has blessed. Hey! Hey! See, eh? I like the testimonies that come from the enemies of people of God. It's a real testimony. When your enemy acknowledge that you have something, you have it. Because it's not in your favor. It's just humbled by the truth. That guy didn't like the children of Israel. He was hired to even curse them. But after he failed many times, he himself agreed. He himself established that you cannot curse whom God has blessed. You see, if it was Moses that said it, you can be saying, eh, wait you go talk before. Shabi, you go just talk, say, God, good. No, this was the enemy that has tried, that now agreed that you cannot curse whom God has blessed. So, are you a blessed person? It means you cannot be cursed. You cannot curse whom God has blessed. No, there is no curse on this earth that can rest on you. It cannot. You can't curse whom God has blessed. This is the things I knew many years ago. Many years ago. When, I, mean, I, mean, I was not like this. I was not like this at all. I was living in my parents' house. My mother was still in the house. Um, the ministry was very nothing. I had no money. Nothing at all. It was all the period I was wearing that one trouser for seven years. Nothing. One prophet came to come and pray in the house. He now said... Uh, <laughs> that there's something my father has done <laughs> that is affecting all the children. We were five boys. So none of us was doing well. There's something my father did that we need to pray. If you're in Nigeria, they must have told you this thing. There are these prophets that don't have work. This is their work. You must, sometimes, but if you, see, if nothing is bad with you, they have no work. You need to understand. Any good mechanic that wants to make money needs to find fault in your car. I hope you know that. Or else he's a Joneser because he won't earn money. Because if they tell you, you're all is well, there's no, you don't need your service. So he said many of those things. <laughs> so they said they're going to do nine VG. A nine VG to cancel it. So everybody must attend. So I told them there and then, I'm not going to attend. Because there's no cost affecting me. I was broke, not that I was blessed. I was looking blessed, I was broke. But I knew I was blessed. But it wasn't showing physically then. I said, I'm not going to attend the VG. It was already in my house. I said, I'll be upstairs sleeping. Keep your voices down when you're praying. You don't understand? There are few people in this world that can agree to that. Most people will say, just pray for me. Just, I will just help me. Help, help, help. Let me just add this, your prayer. To, remember me in your prayer. You know those people? Remember me in your prayer. You don't understand who you are? Why is somebody remembering you? You have direct access. You, you, you can talk to God yourself.
yourself, you're not, I mean, how can I, how can I be able to talk to Busayo now and I'm still calling this man to come and talk to Busayo when he's here? Busayo heard you tell the person to remember you. God heard you when you told that man to remember you in prayers. God, God, God read the chat. And he's wondering, why is she removing me from the discussion? I'm here. Just talk to Send me the chat directly. Wait, 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 wait. You're talking to the person you don't know if he's going to pray throughout this week. Oh, yes. Some people you are waiting to pray for you, he's not praying. He's eating pandemic. Because how do you have faith in a man and not have faith in God? It's what I don't understand. Is it not easier to believe God than to believe a man? Is somebody getting what I'm saying, guys? I told them, keep your voices down. I will not be joining this video and I'll be sleeping because I'm not cursed. Not cursed at all. Putting your head down for those things means you've agreed there's a cause stronger than the blessing on you. You've agreed. You know, people that have called me that, that they, had, they, they dreamt that we saw you die. Saw you in an accident. We saw the real things. Pastor, it's very bad. I said, go and sleep again. <laughs> go and sleep. You didn't sleep well. And you know what? I intentionally don't pray about it. Instead, I go and reassure myself from what God has already said. Once you start to pray about somebody's dream, you have started internalizing that dream. You have agreed that what that man said is superior to what God said. Because two people have said something. That man has said his own and God has said his own. And the Bible said, let every man be a liar and let God be true. They both said, God said, this man said, and you chose to take action based on the one that the man said. I intentionally don't pray about that kind of thing. Because that would be, a, a, okay, so if you pray about this one now, which one will you not pray about? Because every week, what if they call you every week? So if you to know what you enter by one action, the best decisions in life are the ones you make before the time. And if you get what I'm saying, if you have a decision that I don't lend money to people, either dash you or I don't lend. No matter who is coming and no matter the story, I say your answer is prepared. But when you are open to whatever goes, some people's story is strong. When they finish you with the story, you go and say your own things. And bring it. Then later your head will not correct. When it runs. Have you noticed that there's nobody that their passion is the same when they are borrowing the money and when they are returning it? I've never seen before. That when they are borrowing it, they say, look. You look. I go give you now next Tuesday. Unfailingly. You don't know me. You don't know me. Next Tuesday. And if I don't give you, I go sell my car. Give you. Next Tuesday. You go, you go call him for money, the phone go ring, boom, boom, you know, go pick. By afternoon, you go call him, he don't, he's off. By night, now MTN go to answer you. The co subscriber is not even aware or alive <laughs> of this call. <laughs> the best decisions are the ones you make before time. Somebody got what I'm saying? For a single lady, make your decision ahead of time that you will not involve in fornication before marriage. You decide before you meet the man. Not that when you meet the man, you are checking. Mm, mm, ah. Anytime you are negotiating or thinking about bad things, you notice that you always do the wrong thing, Abby. That's the mistake Eve made. You are in the discussion. Eh, if Satan was not telling you a story, you will be great. You will... Make your decision before you reach there. Let it be made ahead. So if, if, if you start praying about every prophecy they give you, so, so every week they will, they will see something for you. And you will start praying again. Before you know it, you start believing more in those things than in the word of God. So I will curse them that word curse. The best testimony is from your enemy when they agree that you are blessed. Ah, there's another great testimony this, the devil gave about Job. When God called him, have you seen my servant Job? Satan himself said, there is a hedge around him. Ah, Satan said the truth for once in his life. He said there is a hedge around Job. The unfortunate thing was that Job didn't know that there was a hedge around him. It's bad when Satan knows more about you than you. Satan 
Since there is a hedge around Job, Job said, I'm afraid that something might happen to us. He was doing sacrifice every day. It's what I was talking about, about praying about any prophecy. He was in panic mode. He was doing sacrifice every day that harm would come. Even Job himself agreed that the thing that I feared has come upon me. He opened the door by fear. Listen, Satan or the devil can't harm you except you open the door. The Bible said, he that breaketh the hedge, the serpent will bite him. Ordinarily, there's a hedge around every child of God. You have heavy protection around you. It's only when you start opening the hedge that you set yourself up to be attacked. And I decree that there's nobody here that will be attacked of the enemy in the name of Jesus. So we curse them that curse you. Hallelujah. So make sure you have not left the hedge open anywhere. The Bible said, the cause costless shall not stand. What does this mean? They are saying any cause, any di diabolical plot against you will not stand, especially when it has no reason to stand. DJ, can you read that scripture for me? He said, the cause costless shall not stand. I'm saying this because there are many Christians also doing things that can open the door for the cause to work. For example, like I said, if you are deliberately fighting another Christian, especially when you are fighting them for something that is their own. Hmm. Sweetheart, if you are sleeping with somebody's husband, if she's praying for God to rescue her, God has to, she has legal standing spiritually to ask for intervention. And when God starts appealing to you to leave this woman's husband, you, God is gentle. He will first appeal to you. Anytime you see a shaking, just know that God has done many letter writing that was ignored. Then he will have to do a vow because he still has to defend the weak. He still has to defend his children. So he will say, these are two of my children. I will not be violent first. Let me first talk. He will send messages to you, both by preaching, by people, by circumstance. When you refuse to hear, he will have no choice but to do a violent shaking. And that one might be disastrous. So that would mean by the, look at it here. He said, as the bird wandering, as the swallow by flying, so a cause that has no cause, that has no basis, shall not what? Come. Meaning that the one that has grounds will come. You can't be stealing from where you walk and be saying you are blessed. The Bible said there's a cause upon every thief. <laughs> There's a curse upon every thief. Oh. You are you can't be you, you, are, you are opening the hedge by such lifestyle. And it's a constant thing. Ah. You are robbing somebody. Hallelujah. A curse that has no or a curse <laughs> that has no curse. <laughs> because the one pronouncing it, somebody might not understand it. A curse, that's how it should be. But in Nigeria, we don't call it like that. A curse that has no cause <laughs> shall not be. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Mr. Married Man, maltreating your wife, there's a cause for you here. They say your prayers. It's in the Bible. So, so what we're saying is this. So, 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 so you, you, you can't be breaking the hedge and also think you can defend yourself against the serpent. Biblically, who is the serpent? Who is serpent in the Bible? The Bible is a coded book. It's a coded book, so it's very simple. You know, in, in codes, when they, they, would, they say green means, anywhere you see green means there's bush in that map. You understand? So anywhere you see green, they've given you the code to decode any green you see. Am I correct? So the first time serpent appeared was what? Satan. So that's the code in the book of the Bible. So when you see, if you break the head, the serpent will bite. It means there are things you would do that would expose you to attacks. Things you do that will expose you. So if a married man, one of it is dishonoring your wife to expose you. Things that wouldn't normally threaten you would threaten you. You expose yourself. It's all over the Bible. If you look at Malachi, you see there. 
He says he was no longer receiving their offerings from their hands. And they were crying and covering the altar with tears. And they asked God, that why are you no more? He asked them, why are they crying? They said, God is not receiving my offering. He said, why, why, why is God not receiving my offering? He said, because of how you are dealing with the wife of your youth. Woo! He said, you have dealt with her treacherously. He said, Malachi. He said, things can't work. <laughs> and I don't know why. <laughs> you know, there are people that say, oh, Old Testament is past. New Testament, it shows you lack understanding of spiritual things. The thing that the Bible is trying to say has passed away is the law. And what they mean by that, they are saying that the basis of our relationship with God is no more keeping the law. It doesn't mean that the whole law is useless. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. If you are a staff of a company, what is keeping you as a responsibility of that company is that you are working there. If they adopt you, if the chairman now adopts you as his child, the basis of the relationship has changed. You can still be working there, but now you are working as a son. So if you don't come on Monday, it doesn't stop you from being a son. I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. So that, that's all they mean by the law has passed. It doesn't mean that the coming on time is not good. It just means that that's not what makes you a son, but it's still good. So everything you see in the Ten Commandments, they are still relevant today. They say, do that shall not kill. You say it has passed. We cannot be killing people. Is that what they mean? That's not what they mean. So when you go to Malachi, if you see that the, the, one of the causes they mention is treating your wife badly, the next chapter they also mention the cause of, of, not, of not paying tithe. And they say, oh, God is not causing anybody. God never causes people, but you expose yourself. That's what they're saying. You are exposing yourself. They say you are cursed with a curse. They didn't say God cursed you. God can never curse you. They say, but you have exposed yourself to a guy called the devourer. Devourer is the same guy called serpent. They say you have exposed yourself when you do not give honor. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? But I decree for you today. God will fight for you in the name of Jesus. Anywhere they gather against you, they will fall for your sake in the name of Jesus. They say any tongue that rise against you in judgment, say you will condemn it. I decree those tongues are condemned in the name of Jesus. God will silence them. God will defeat them. Anywhere they are threatening you, God will threaten them. Anyone in a court case that you are the innocent party. I decree God will pass judgment in your favor. God will hold them where they cannot escape. God will restore and recompense everything you have lost in the name of Jesus. Where you can't speak for yourself, God will speak for you. Where you can't defend yourself, God will defend you. He will curse those that curse you. In the name of Jesus. He's a defender. If God defend you, nothing can. You see, if a man's way pleases the Lord, even his enemies will relax. They have to chill. Are you here, somebody? Any plan of the devil that, has, that is rising against you, I decree to be dissolved in the name of Jesus. God will weaken their hands. God will weaken their plans. God will weaken their plots. In the name of Jesus. Anyone contesting for something that duly belongs to you, I decree God will threaten them in the name of Jesus. God will fight for you in the name of Jesus. Any serpent that was biting you or trying to bite you, I decree a rescue mission for you in the name of Jesus. God will rescue you in the name of Jesus. And just like God appeared in the dream to people that wanted to hurt Abraham, even without Abraham's knowledge, I decree that God will appear to your enemies tonight in the name of Jesus. God will appear in your favor in the name of Jesus. Wherever they gather, God will appear to them in the name of Jesus. Fear will grip their heart. They will not go ahead with their evil plan. 
they will not go ahead with their evil plots. In the name of Jesus. If it rightfully belongs to you, it will come to you. Nothing will stop it in the name of Jesus. They will let go of that thing that belongs to you. They will let go of that thing that belongs to you. There are some of you here, people that have hurt you in the past will come back and apologize to you. People that have taken your properties or your things in the past, they will come back and return it to you. In the name of Jesus. I decree that you will see firsthand the vengeance part of our God. The God of the angel armies will show up for you. Elisha told his servant. The servant ran to him and said, hey, master, we are surrounded. <laughs> and Elisha said, God, open his eyes that he might see. And his eyes opened and he saw that our own angels have surrounded their own army. Hallelujah. And he said, greater is he that is with us than they that are with them. I decree that in this season, you become conscious of your protection. You become conscious of your angels. You become conscious of your defense. In the name of Jesus. Any cause that has been operating before now in your lineage, in your natural lineage, I decree it ends in your own place in the name of Jesus. From your own path, that cause turns to a blessing in the name of Jesus. We reverse any cause that has been operating in the name of Jesus. We officially release the blessing in the name of Jesus. Your own story will change that of your family in the name of Jesus. Your own testimony will change that of your family in the name of Jesus. Maybe before you, they didn't live long. Maybe before you, they didn't prosper. Maybe before you, they didn't stay in their husbands or wives' houses. Maybe before you, their children didn't live long. Maybe before you, they had delay in childbirth. Maybe before you, they had delay in getting married. Whatever negative story that has been associated with your biological family, I decree with you, your case is different in the name of Jesus. You cannot curse whom God has blessed. You cannot curse whom God has blessed. You cannot curse whom God has blessed. I decree that from today, the blessing over your life overshadows any curse in the name of Jesus. Anywhere the hedge has been broken, I decree for a mending work in the name of Jesus. I decree for a mending work in the name of Jesus. God will protect you. God will cover you. God will take care of you. You will not die prematurely. You will not die prematurely. You will not lose your family. You will not lose your children. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. In the name of Jesus. Only with your eyes and ears will you behold the things that fall for your enemies. It will never come near you. A thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand at your other side. But it will never come near you. I say it will never come near you. I say it will never come near you. You and your household are divinely protected. In the name of Jesus. You will not see shame. Anything that was designed to bring you shame, to bring you depression, to bring you the fear and anxiety, I decree God steps in now in the name of Jesus. I say your God will step in now in the name of Jesus. The same God of Abraham, he will step in now in the name of Jesus. The same God of Isaac, he will step in now in the name of Jesus. The same God of Jacob, he will step in now in the name of Jesus. In that office, God shows up for you. In that line of work, God shows up for you. In your industry, God shows up for you. If your promotions have been delayed... Your increase has been delayed. Your bonus has been delayed. I decree from heaven 
It is released now in the name of Jesus. It is released now in the name of Jesus. There are some of you that will call you from a transaction that has long gone. And they will say, we are owing you money. And they will send you that money in the name of Jesus. I said they will send you that money in the name of Jesus. Anyone owing you, I decree they will lose their rest. They will lose their peace. They will pay you in the name of Jesus. Any payment due to you, I decree right now, the people in charge will call you and give it to you. In the name of Jesus. Vital relationships that you have lost. Because the Bible says when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Vital relationships you have lost. I decree now, they are being restored in the name of Jesus. They are being restored now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We know you will curse anyone that curses us. We know we are fully protected. We are fully defended. We are fully represented. In any court... Whether it's the court of man, the court of law, or the court of heaven, we know we have the greatest advocate ever. You will defend us to the last. You will defend us and our household in the name of Jesus. No evil is permitted in our lives. No evil is permitted in our families. No evil is permitted in our household. Everywhere we walk, just like you said about Joseph, that God blessed Potiphar because of Joseph. Because of God, us in those companies, we decree that company is blessed in the name of Jesus. The blessing upon us, we rub off in that company in the name of Jesus. Our bosses will share the same testimony that Joseph has shared. They will recognize that it's the blessing upon us blessing the company in the name of Jesus. Because of the blessing upon us, Nigeria will prosper. Because of us in this land, Nigeria will make progress. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We decree this so in the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a big hand, somebody. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah.